Hello, 45 Alpha Charlie Papa channel. This is the old singing gunsmith with you once again, working on our 1906 Winchester 22 pump rifle project. We've had the barrel cleaned and ready to go for some time. We've been waiting for the barrel liner. Barrel liner came in yesterday, so we can proceed with lining this barrel. Now, when we look at the barrel liner, you're going to notice that it has a groove around the end here. Now, my understanding of that is that groove was used to hold the liner as the button was pulled through it to rifle it. If that is the case, you probably want to put this towards the breech end and this towards the muzzle end. Why? Because if, in fact, the, the button was pulled through this way and this was used to hold the barrel liner while the button was pulled through, that means everything all the grain is going to be aligned this way. Any little burrs, whatever, are going to be sticking this way. So that way, when you go to shoot, the bullet's going to be going along with the direction that they are and would get less letting. I don't know if that's true, but obviously if the grain at any edge of the grain is sticking this way, it's going to catch on the bullet as it comes through, and it's going to cause it to shave lead off of the bullet. Again, I've done a few of these, and I don't know that it truly matters, but people smarter than me have told me that this is the way to do it. This end goes towards the uh, breech end, so that's what we'll do. Obviously, it's not going to fit in there as it is. We have to drill it out. Now, this is where people get a little bit nervous about actually drilling out a barrel. I mentioned earlier that you have a special drill to do that with. It has a smaller tip on it that steps up to the diameter of the barrel liner so that when you go in this first inch acts as a guide down the barrel to keep the drill straight that way you're not going to wander off okay so now it's just a simple drilling process we're going to keep the uh, uh, drill bit itself lubricated we're going to use a regular hand drill if you have a lathe a lathe is a better way to go but if you're a hobbyist or a beginner gunsmith, you're not going to have access to a lathe. So a hand drill will work. Once again, one of those tools that we said, there's a lot of tools that you may already have around the house that will work out just fine for gun work. This is one of them. And as I say, this is not exactly brain science. It's not rocket surgery. I'll put a few drops of oil on the tip. As we get started lubricated, I'm starting from the breech end, but it really doesn't matter because this is only going to go a little more than halfway through the barrel. Every little bit, I'm going to pull this out. And brush the tips off of it. And put a couple more drops of oil on it. drill starts heating up your best bet is take a break just walk away okay we've broke through that means the hole goes all the way through how about that <laughs> 
so we've got our our 22 barrel our original Winchester barrel is now totally drilled out now we're gonna go get a cleaning rod a couple of patches make sure we get all the chips out of there and our barrel will be ready for relining well almost hmm okay so now we've got our barrel liner the barrel has been drilled for it we put the end of the groove on it at the breech end of the barrel make sure the other end goes all the way through now there's two ways that these are traditionally put in one is they're either soldered or they're glued uh, soldering is I don't know that it's preferable it's certainly much much more difficult because you have to control the heat throughout the barrel and make sure you actually get a solder joint which is really hard to do with something that you can't really test so uh, in this case I'm going to glue it I'm going to use uh, probably acro glass you can use the original acro glass or the gel just on the original acro glass you have to make sure it doesn't run away because it'll drain out the, the ends. You have to plug one end and stand it on end. But nonetheless, we've, uh, we're ready to install our liner. So let's uh, take a few minutes, think about this. And one of the things we're going to have to do is we've got to degrease the inside of that barrel. You know, we've been putting oil on it to help the cutting action. Well, now that we're there, we've got to get all that oil out. And we're going to have to make sure we clean off the uh, barrel liner also. To make sure both of them are totally oil free so that the epoxy will stick to it so let's see if we can get this back out of here now and we will prep that and then we'll get back to you um we're at the point now we want to put the barrel liner in and this gets a little tricky in, in a way and it's going to take a little bit of time but nonetheless the first thing we need to do is after we have gone and uh, drilled the barrel it's we've been pouring oil in it to keep the the drill well lubricated and now that we're going to have to try and glue it into the uh, uh, barrel the liner into the barrel we will need to get rid of all that oil so the first thing you do is you find yourself a nice pair of rubber gloves because this is going to get messy besides which I don't want to get oil back on the parts after I clean them does that make sense? Oil for my hands. So we got a pair of nice gloves here. Get ourselves a, a good uh, uh, oil dissolver. Something that doesn't have any uh, lingering uh, coating in it. And we'll take our barrel. And we're going to spray the brake cleaner in it and flush it. Flush it all out, get all that oil out of there. Make sure it's good and clean. Run the patch down it. Because we want the epoxy to stick to it. That will evaporate off pretty quickly. And if it makes you look feel better, you can look down it and say, "Yeah, that hole goes all the way through there. Look at that, it comes out the other side and everything." And with the liner, since we've been handling it with our nasty old hands, we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray that down. make sure that there's no grease no oil on that all right now while that dries up um well, next thing we're going to look at is what we're going to do this job with okay here you can see we got some 
Acroglass, Acroglass gel, uh, a mixing cup and some spoons to measure it out with, as well as some black uh, dye to put in there. So we're going to mix that all together just as soon as our uh, uh, steel parts are ready. And we'll move on from there. Okay, one of the things we don't want to do is when we coat this liner with Acroglass and we push it down the barrel, we're going to be of course, scraping the acroglass that's uh, up and pushing it ahead of that, and I don't want to get any uh, in the bore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cleaning rod and a patch. I'm going to continue pushing that patch down the bore until I put my finger over the muzzle and push it right up to the muzzle. That way I won't get any I won't get any uh, acroglass inside into the bore. That would be a that would be bad, a bad thing. Okay, now we'll mix up our acroglass, which is a one-to-one -one mixture. So I just use some of my wife's old measuring spoons. Uh, she doesn't necessarily know I have these, so shh. We got equal amounts of uh, acroglass hardener and alcohol and resin in there. I'm going to take some black dye because we're going to blacken the barrel afterwards or glue it so we take some black dye and it doesn't take an awful lot just a, a little skidge how much is in a skidge about that much okay we got our barrel in there we got our liner now if you remember we're going to make sure that the groove part of the liner goes to the breech end of the barrel so we're going to put that in there just as far, okay? And so we're going to spread this on here like butter. Butter on bread. You know, I don't know if this is how everybody does this job. Uh, originally, people used to solder them in. Uh, soldering is, uh, if you're good at it, it's a great way of, of, of putting them in the barrel. There's nothing wrong with it, that's for sure. Uh, I'm always questioning my solder joints. I, I don't trust that 10 inches down that barrel, I've got a, uh, as good a solder joint as I think I've got at the ends. So I find it this to work for me mainly because I've never had it fail and uh, I'm not worried about whether that epoxy 10 inches down the barrel set up or not it's it's going to be in there and it's going to be holding all of this epoxy and we'll have a good complete seal there we go we got a nice even coat pretty much along the entire barrel let's put this down and now we come to the ugly part introduce this into bore I hope and we're going to scrape most of it off as we go oh it's getting harder and harder to push pusha pusha Give me that back. Put that against the back here so I'm not hurting my hand so much. And yeah, I gotta wait for it to come out the other side. Come on, kiddo. Get in there. There it is. Came all the way through. Now we can take the excess here.
I'm absolutely positively sure you've got everything anything left on the tip we can always transfer some of this back to the front of the barrel like this the front of the liner I should say like this so we have an extra and then back it on in like that All right, now we're just going to clean this off. Try and clean the excess off at the butt end here so that we can make our extractor cuts. And the solvent for this before it sets up is vinegar. Let's see if I have some. On paper towel, we'll clean up any of the acro glass that's that is sticking like in here in the threads obviously we don't want too much there in the threads it's going to keep us from putting it back on all right our liner's in the barrel now we have to wait for it to the epoxy to set up and then we can move on to the, the next step okay i'll be back with you in a little while after that epoxy has got its time to do its job okay ladies and gentlemen we are back our liner is now glued into our barrel and the glue has set up it's 24 hours later next thing is to cut off the excess and i left just a tad sticking out of the muscle and we're not going to cut it off actually flush we're going to leave just the just a little bit here let's try it from the side here you can see what's going on short pistol barrel okay uh, next we need to face those off flush so we're in that case we're going to use our chamfer cutters again as we used when we were crowning the other barrels so we're not going to crown this one put a handle on it the cutter in with a flat there's the lock pin, the locking screw. A couple drops of oil on the surface to be cut and a couple on the pilot. They're very easily going to go without a lot of pressure on it. And we're going to now cut it. where it's absolutely square with the bore. Now I suppose if you were really good with a uh, file, you could do this with a file. But really good with a file does not describe me. Make sure we get all the filings off of there, or the cuttings off of there. Once again, Pour drops of oil. And this is one of those jobs that's just going to take as long as it takes. There's a negative side to all of this. That everything does take some tooling. Nothing is uh, done without gauges and tools and, and 
is an investment in tools anytime you're going to do any kind of gunsmithing. Okay, we're going to keep going with this until we've got that flush. We'll turn it around. We'll do the um, breech end the same. Then we'll chamber it with the chamber reamer, another tool you have to buy. And check it with headspace gauges. And then we'll have our barrel done. Now, we've crowned the barrel, cut that down and cut a target crown in it. And on the other end, we've cut that liner down and we've chambered it. Now, I would love to, love to tell you exactly how you go about doing that, but it's different for different guns. In all honesty, you're going to have to look and see how yours operates. This particular one is flush. The, uh, in the, the breech end here is flush. The extractor comes in and hooks the corner or the edge of the shell to pull it out. Others, it's recessed. And you ha simply have to look at what you've got and what model you have in order to determine exactly how that's done at the end, which is why I didn't go into great detail of showing you. Now, your questions, if you go to Brownells on your, on your computer, they have got a section in their catalog called Learn across the top on, in the uh, bar, bar and you can find all their directions. This is, in fact is 12 pages, 12 pages of how to uh, line a barrel and recut the chamber. I'm certainly not going to try and read all of that to you. It's available free online and it gives you all the different variations that you can run into. But that actually, this is one of those jobs that actually takes some gunsmithing. I just can't tell you that you do A and B happens every time. It doesn't. Because of different designs of the firearms, there are different techniques that are necessary, and the information is there out at Brownell's uh, website for you to download and go through it and learn how to do that. It's not difficult. It's not particularly impossible. Uh, it's just you're going to have to invest in some equipment. This again, we get back to why gunsmithing is so expensive. Uh, you need a chamber reamer, you need headspace gauges. Uh, to get this done right, you have to have make, be able to make the investment and willing to make the investment. So anything else I tell you would be a lie. I can't, I don't have 50 of them here to do to show you every different possibility. So it's better if I just refer you to the source. This is the old singing gunsmith. Be with you again next time when we'll take a look at how to start getting the barrel ready for finishing. Okay, over the barrel and the whole gun ready for finishing. Until then, happy trails. Happy trails to you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.